Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So we have seen multiple things in promises. We have seen promise and uh, what do you mean by resolve and reject? We have seen the promise chaining also in the last session. But today we are going to talk about what do you mean by promise all function. So promise.all is commonly used when you want to perform multiple asynchronous operation in the parallel mode. And you are waiting for all of them to complete before moving on. It means, let's see, I have... Uh, three four functions and all these three four functions are doing some asynchronous work and they all are returning some promise so what we have to do we have to wait for all the promises until all the promises are fulfilled and then only i really want to proceed further so we are going to talk a couple of uh, scenarios or a couple of uh, combinations here the first combination that case number one that we are going to talk about let's see i'm going to create one function which is actually giving me a promise and the promise is actually resolved, right? So that is uh, the case number one, having one function. And let's see, in the same um, case number one, we are going to talk about the uh, another a function, which is again going to give me the resolve. And uh, third function is also is uh, give me the resolve a promise. So this is the use case number one that I'm talking about here. Right, so how to do this in the case number one. So let's create three functions here, three basic functions that I'm going to create. So let's uh, so let's store the function with the method expression or with the simple function expression. Let's see, this is my uh, function number one, which is equal to, and then I'm going to create one anonymous function also. You can create that or you can create a simple function also. You can create it here. So let's say I'm going to create one function, which is actually uh, returning me a new promise here. So I'm going to return a new promise. And we know that um, in the promise object, we have to supply resolve and reject. So I'm writing resolve and reject. So case number one says that you have to create three functions and every function is giving me the uh, resolve or fulfilled promise, right? So that is what I really want to have it here. So let's use it here. And I simple writing one uh, set timeout also here which is actually resolving it. So here I'm writing that resolve and with this resolve, let's see, I'm returning some uh, some string here. For example, let's see, I'm writing data from uh, function number one. That's what I have written. I'm not writing any rejection here from this particular function. And then if you really want to give a delay, so let's see, I'm giving a delay for 2000 milliseconds here. Now, uh, and then we have to close a curly braces also here like this. So likewise, I'm going to create second function also. So I'm just giving random name here. Let's see, this is my function number two and I'm writing function number two, we are getting the data. And then I'm writing another function here that is also function number three and then data from function number uh, three here. So if you notice that in the case number one, uh, all three functions are actually resolving the, resolving the promise. I'm not writing any rejection here. And then I'm going to call it now. How to call it? So simple, you can call it with the help of a promise dot all, you can use it here. So promise dot all is a method where it says that you have to supply, give me the, all the values here. So all the values of what, all the values of promises function that you have created here in the form of array that you have to give. So here I'm writing one array sign here like this, and then three functions that we have written function one, function two, and function three. So I'm going to write, okay, fine. This is my function number one a function number one like that. And then you have to call this function comma second function that you are having function number two and then call it like this. And then I'm writing, let's see function number three and then call it here like that. So here it's writing comma separated in the square bracket means in the form of array that you have to supply it over here like that. Okay. So if you really want to see the clear picture, it looks like this function number one, function number two, Function number three, if I'm writing it separately, and then this is the array is getting closed here. And then after that, generally what we do, we always write a dot then method. And then whatever the output, which is coming from one, two, three respectively, and then I'm going to store it in some array here. So let's see whatever the uh, data, some array that you can create it here, data array, and the three things that we are returning, function number one, function number two, and function number three, data from function one, two, three, we are returning some string. So all these three string will be given to this particular data array. And then if you really want what exactly you want to do with this array, then you can supply it here. And then let's say I really want to print it on the console. 
that with the help of simple console dot lock and then i really want to print so i'll simple write that okay all data from uh different functions here like this and then comma data array that you can print it here in case of any kind of error although we are not returning any rejection error but still i'm writing one catch here and then storing in this particular array variable and then with the catch handler i'm simple writing that okay find log in or error in promise and then i'm writing some error here and that's it okay so let's see is it really working or not so i'm just going to run it open the terminal so let's open the terminal here and uh, let me clear the console promise all dot js okay it's the right file name and then run it so now you can see that after few seconds all the promises are done and it says that okay our data from function one two and three we are getting it from where we are getting it over here along with this message all data from different functions and then we are getting all data from different function data one data two and data three here like this perfect so promise dot all will wait until all the functions are fulfilled or all the functions are resolved and then you can collect all the data from all the functions from all the asynchronous functions they are giving you the promises and then you can store it in the form of data array here so if you don't want to let's see uh, print this you can return any array also or any number also or anything that you want to return you can return it over here for example let's see if i really want to create one constant data here so here i'm writing let's see constant data number data is equal to let's say i'm creating one array here so i'm writing one comma two comma three comma five and let me uh return this so i don't want to write this result i say okay fine i'm going to resolve it and then i'm returning this particular data array from here so instead of passing a string message now i'm passing one data array so let me just comment it out this one and then i'm writing this is uh instead of one to five here i'm writing six comma seven comma eight comma nine here and uh, here for function three i don't want to return with the message here i want to return the same data array but different values here so let's see 10 comma 11 comma 12 comma uh, 13 that i'm passing it here right so now if you see this carefully that all three promises is having their own return data data and data and then I'm storing it uh, here and in the data array and printing the entire data array structure here. So let me just run it again. So after seconds, you can see that all data from different functions. This is the resolved data from array num function number one, function number two and function number three here. So this is such a really nice, full, uh, nice thing when in the real practical examples also, let's see three or multiple uh, functions that you are using it they all are doing some asynchronous operation unless you're getting some data from api number one api number two and api number three you can combine all the data together and then you can store it in the data array and you can manipulate your data array further or whatever you want to do with the combined data or combined result you can proceed further here like that so this is the case number one let's see that we have written and all three functions are resolving it but what if i have another case right where one is uh, rejected and one is getting resolved so i'm writing the case number two here so let's write the case number two that uh, case number two says that i'm going to create a function function one which is getting resolved and the function number two here i'm writing that is getting rejected here it means it's giving me the resolved promise and the second function is giving me the rejected here so let's see how to do this right so i'll do one thing without uh, wasting a time i'll just uh, copy this thing from here copy this guy here and here and this time i'm changing the function name so let's see this is my get data here okay get data one here i'm writing it and uh, remove this thing and uh, i'm simple supply this message here only okay so i'm writing data from get data function okay let me remove one also let's see simple get data function that i have returned here okay so this function is resolving it and uh, second function that i'm going to write that is rejecting actually so here how we reject so i'm writing that okay uh get error something like this and new promise and this time i'm calling the reject function here and in the reject that i'm going to supply in the form of 
error. Okay, or any new error also you can pass it or you can just simple write in double code that I'm rejecting it with the error that, uh, uh, let's see, data is not available. Okay, data is not available from uh, get error, something like this that I have written. So it's clearly visible. One function is giving me the resolve promise and the second function is giving me the rejected promise. Okay, two functions, let's see, I have returned. Then the same thing, I'm going to use the promise here that with the promise dot all method that I'm going to write and again square bracket and the first function that I'm writing get data comma the second function that I'm writing get error and then in the square bracket that we have to write it here so if you again segregate it here like this this is the array uh, data number one and the second one is in the array is like this and then after that I'm going to use one handler here so I'm writing dot then method here. And then again, the same thing, data array, let's say I'm going to store it here. And what exactly you want to do with this, this particular data array? Then I'm saying that fine, that uh, you simple write console.log, console.log and what exactly you want to print. So let's see here, I'm writing that uh, all data, okay, something let's see fetched here, all data fetched, whatever the data, if both the promises are fulfilled, then I'm going to store it in this particular data array and then I'm going to uh, print it here like this. But if any kind of error is coming or if one of the is not fulfilled, one of the promises is not fulfilled, then I'm going to store it in the catch with the error variable. And then I'm going to uh, print a message here that console.log, console.log that I'm writing here that error occurred. Okay, something like this and a colon, and whatever the error is coming, then I'm going just going to print it here like that. Perfect here. So what will happen in this case, one function is giving me the resolve promise and second one is giving me the reject. So remember one thing promise dot all will handle only and only when all the promises are fulfilled, but here in one of them is not fulfilled. So when we run this, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to uh, use the terminal here and let's see this. So let me clear the console. I'll do one thing. For time being, case number one that I'm going to comment it out. Okay, let it comment it out. So we just focus on the case number two only. Okay, so let's run it again. So here you can see that after two seconds of delay, it's, uh, let me just save it and run it again. Sorry, I think it is not saved, but run it again. So here you can see that error data is not available from the get error. So that's what the concept here is very simple that, uh, if both of them is getting resolved, then only the promise dot all will be processed. Then only it will come inside a then handler or then block. Otherwise it will always go in the catch. So tomorrow, if you have, let's see five to seven different functions that you have created, but if one of them is not getting fulfilled and you are using that particular promise function over here in the promise dot all, because of that, it will not be fulfilled. It will always go in the catch block here like that. I hope this is clear now. Okay, so this is the thing that uh, about the promise dot all. So just try that. These two cases are very simple, pretty simple. Promise dot all, very famous interview question also. That what is the difference between normal promise and the promise dot all here? Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.